Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Vancha Kalpa Tarubhisja Kripa Sindhu Pehavaja Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gaur, Bhaktivinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And so I offer my obeisances to all the devotees, Hare Krishna. Um, this will be the final in a series of about almost two weeks centered around the Ramayan, the activities of the persons who took part in the, that great spiritual epic, along with a lot of emphasis on the glories of Sri Hanumanji. So I thought this might be, since it's the final time I wanted to kind of follow up and see from my own perspective and maybe uh, arrange to bring out more of the things that we heard in a more uh, message type of forum. What we had learned from these two weeks plus whatever we had previously known prior to that about some of the pastimes or some of the incident they made up. <laughs> so what I'd like to do, and I'd like to see if anyone, everyone can participate to some degree, is <clears throat> state a particular pastime or a couple, a message in the pastime and see who which of the devotees who are listening can give me a little bit of a message point that this particular pastime uh, indicates. Now, a particular pastime may indicate more than one message. So the idea is to think, what is the main message of this particular pastime? So uh, if everyone's in agreement, I would like to use that as the format for finalizing and summarizing at the same time what we had heard in the last two weeks. We, it's been about almost, two, it has actually been two weeks that we had focused fully on the Ramayan with one or two days, which we didn't because of the programs with other Sanghas. <laughs> So um, I hope everyone is uh, thinking in terms because it's not enough for me just to speak something. Um, I can't see anybody, so I'm just speaking. A lot of times I don't know how much devotees are actually ingesting or even understanding what is being said. When you're with a visual audience, you can really see how what you're saying is being accepted or not accepted. When you're with an audience that's not visual, sometimes you wonder uh, how much of the information is being understood and to what degree it's understood like that. So I was thinking in order to summarize this wonderful and most amazing uh, Leela of the Lord, I'll, I'll read like a couple lines and someone can, uh, you know, open up their, uh, their uh, microphone and 
give a maybe a, either a sutra, a few words, or a one or two line message that this particular pastime uh, indicates. Okay, so um, I don't know if you're with me or not, but I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> so please forgive me if I'm uh, pushing you a little bit too much, but it's good because, you know, this the second part of hearing is understanding and after understanding learning how to apply the knowledge in our life if we don't have the understanding we don't have we cannot have the proper application so the first thing i would like to say is point one and uh, this is one sentence or two sentences it was a known fact in Ayodhya that Kaikeyi loved Lord Ram more than she, her own son Bart. But then how could she become so evil? So what is the main point in that particular pastime that we heard? How could she become so evil? Who would like to answer that question? So Guru Maharaj Shri Devi Mataji has replied in the chat. Uh, she has said uh, bad association. Good. That's exactly right. By the effects of bad association. Thank you very much. Okay. Next one. We'd like to hear from a range of devotees and not from the same devotees over and over again. So Guru Maharaj. Okay. So Guru Maharaj, there is one more hands so, up for this. Is oh, Sudha okay. well, that... Yeah. Sudha Mataji, do you want say? to unmute yourself and say? Uh, thanks Mataji. Um, Hare Krishna, Dhanat Pranam uh, Maharaj, please accept my um, respectful obeisances. Uh, Maharaj, um, uh, uh, when you were like uh, narrating the pastime, like uh, about Kaike Mata, I, uh, the striking point, like I really like Ma Maharaj, like, you know, you mentioned like listening, uh, lending your ear um, when someone is criticizing and you're um, lending your ear for like a longer period. Of time. So that um, criticizing that consciousness will become your consciousness. So uh, what I understood is like Kaikai Mata was like, you know, she was like uh, hearing like uh, from Mandu, um, sorry, um, um, Mandara, I think Maharaj. So Ma she, Man Mantara. Mantara, sorry, Maharaj. So she was like lend, uh, lending her ear to Mantara for like longer time. And finally she got convinced um, and uh, 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 finally she got convinced and uh, her, that's how like uh, consciousness got so that's uh -huh. okay so power of bad association but then Thank you, the fault of us of accepting that association okay yes, two sir. sides okay good very nice thank, thank you, you and that makes that completes that we can avoid bad association but if we don't then then we are victimized <laughs> Guru Maharaj, okay. you also pointed out, this is, uh, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and to your lotus feet. I uh, just also the fact that if we, not just having bad association, but walking away from the bad association, if somebody is criticizing another person, you mentioned that there was one devotee, he would, I can't remember his name, but I think he was out in California, maybe. I forgot who it was. But he, every time so he, someone would start talking bad about another devotee or someone, yeah. he would walk, He would simply walk away. Yeah, that's what, uh, this is what Suda just said, that lending an ear to hearing causes you to become victimized. Yeah, that's what she just said. I'm you're just sorry, saying yeah. it from, you're saying it from another angle that uh, you should walk away or should not listen. Yeah. yeah, she said it from the positive side, you said it from the negative side, same point though. Anyway, 
That's, yeah, that can be emphasized enough. We have a choice when things happen in that way, whether we can, but sometimes our choices become limited by the, the effects of that association. And we don't know how to get away from that. That also may be there. Maybe due to some attachment or even some slight interest in what's being said that keeps us from leaving. Okay, so here's the next one. Uh, Lord Ram was willing to become the king as the service to his Ma Maharaj Dar Dasarath. And he was also willing to go to the forest as a service to Maharaj Dasarath, his father. So what does that indicate? He was willing to become the king and he was also willing to go to the forest based on the instructions of the same person. So what can we learn from that? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to Shri Prabhupada, all goes to your holiness. Um, I, I can recollect a little bit like um, uh, we can learn obedience and uh, respect to the elders and, uh, and listening to the spiritual master, whatever or whatever instructions give, you have to, you are following that in all the circumstances. Okay, that's correct. But there's another point that needs to be brought out. What does it actually say? The person who is, you know, Ram was willing to become the king and he was also willing to go to the forest. What does that say about Ram's attitude? Please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj, all glories to Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. It uh, explains the principle of detachment or renunciation. Yeah, he was detached, but and what is the positive part of his attachment? Atta what was the, his duty what was the and attached to doing his duty of uh, obey, obeying his father. Right. Okay. You, you, you both got it correct. He was more interested in obedience to superiors than he was in, in doing what he wanted to do. He was more attached to the service, to the superiors, and not to the position that he would receive as king. Mm -hmm. Yeah, attachment to service and not attachment to position. Obedience to superiors, pushing a self aside one's own desires. Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Here's one, should be, should be to vanquish the, the uh, devotional life means to vanquish the demoniac tendencies in our heart. Lord Ram's purpose to kill the demons was to fulfill by his banishment to the forest. So when this one's a little harder to understand. Maybe we'll skip that. What, what it says is our, our mission in life, it's about our mission in life is to destroy the, te bad, the, the bad tendencies in our heart. And our mission, in, our, Ram's mission in life was to go to the forest and kill the demons. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. The law of gravity is only in effect in the earth sphere and not beyond. So also laws of material nature act only in material consciousness and not in spiritual consciousness. Okay. 
So what, what can we glean from that statement? Uh, Hare Krishna, uh, Pranam Maharaj. Um, can I share Maharaj? Okay. Yes, but you need to turn up your volume because I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Is it better, Maharaj? Mm, more, higher. Um, uh, Hare Krishna, is it better, Maharaj? You're getting there. It's getting better. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, Maharaj. I think um, I'm attending on Chromebook. I think that's the max volume I can do. Okay, I yeah. can, I can, I, I think I can pick it up. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, so, Maharaj, I remember like uh, when you were like uh, uh, narrating the pastime of Sita Mata, like uh, Maya Sita actually um, was the Sita, like Ravana captured, but not the actual Sita Mata. So in that uh, past time while narrating Maharaj, you mentioned like uh, uh, the transcendence, uh, the transcendental knowledge, I mean, demonic uh, Rakshasas can never touch the transcendental nature. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, uh, that's what I understood. You are uh, uh, in the mode of transcendental nature the demon, demonic nature will never touch you. Mm -hmm. uh, only so, when you're in, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, only when you're in the material modes, uh, the Maya will attack you. So I'm not okay. sure if that is, uh, I can relate to your question, but I just uh, got you, it. You, well, you pretty much reiterated what I said by giving an example, which is very interesting. But what is it about spiritual consciousness that is not that we a person in spiritual consciousness will act differently than a person in material consciousness when they're faced with the same situation, with, the, with their face faced with the same negative situation? What, how will a spiritual person process a reverse in life as how will a materialistic person process a reverse in life? Okay, Maharaj. Maharaj, um, I don't know if the other, um, if we are um, getting attached to some reverse in life, then we're acting on the material platform. And if we can um, understand that this, that this reversal is part of the three modes of material nature, and we place our um, consciousness with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we can overcome or become detached from any reversal within the uh, material consciousness. Yeah, very good. That's that's actually correct. But then there's one more point that could be added to that. That's true. But then what would be the consequence for a spiritual person? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, may I add, add something to this point? Yeah. Uh, that, uh, someone who, who is uh, uh, a spiritual person, uh, he can make a good situation uh, out of every bad situation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the second point. They, they detach themselves from the effects of the material energy and accept, accept it as an opportunity to make advancement in spiritual life. By understanding deeper how to apply spiritual principles to every and each and every situation. <clears throat> Good, okay.
Okay, the citizens of Ayodhya wanted to go with Ram in the forest and leave behind all material comforts in the city of Ayodhya. What does that say? <laughs> Think about it in your terms of your own spiritual practice. This one is not so mysterious, it's quite under easy, but still it needs to require some thought. Mm -hmm. Does this not mean, Guru Maharaj, that um, everything which is um, uh, within this material world is the property uh, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and we, when we surrender to him, we should be able to understand that everything belongs to him and be able to surrender uh, whatever we have because we think we think it's ours, but it's really the, the property of the Lord and uh, be able to give it up at any point in time for, for him. That's the point. Yeah, you got it. Now we can give up anything in order to become Krishna conscious. The citizens were willing to give up everything and even live in the forest with Ram because that was to them, that was their, I mean, they were so attached to Ram. So being coming attached to devotional service means a devotee can make any sacrifice in order to, uh, you know, become Krishna conscious. Yeah. Thank you. You got that one. Okay, here's one that you, you might have to think of a little bit. When the citizens followed Ram into the forest, and then of course we were mentioned that one night um, he left the citizens while they were asleep and he took off. And then when they woke up, he was gone. So what can we learn from that one? <laughs> this is more this is more analogous than it is than it is uh, factual. It's factual in, in its point, but it's analogous in its understanding. Who can get that one? What does what does sleep represent? What does it indicate? Ram left the citizens when they were asleep. What does that say? Who can get that one? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, Sri Devi Mataji has said mode of ignorance. Yeah, and yes, that's right. The mode of ignorance causes you to what? Uh, Guru Maharaj, the mode of ignorance makes us uh, lazy, indolent, sleepy, having inertia, not vigilant. Ex not exactly. That one, if one is lazy or inattentive in bhakti, one will lose the taste for bhakti. One has to remain attentive, otherwise the taste for bhakti could be lost. The citizens were asleep, Ram was gone. <laughs> It's called alertness and spiritual life, to be alert. <laughs> sleep, sleep is used as the indicator in this case, that's all. But it's about inattention, laziness, indolence, like that. Okay, here's one. 
uh, bar disowned Kaikei, Perlad disregarded Haranikashi Pu. What can we learn from the activities of Bart and Prahlad in this case? That those who are inimical to devotional service, even if they are related to us, we have to give them up because the service of the Lord is our uh, constitutional position. Good. That's one point. I didn't even think of that point, but yeah, that, that's the point. That's a good point. But then what is, what is it about giving them up that is beneficial To them. Um, Hare Krishna, uh, Dandaprana Maharaj. Maharaj, I remember one point like uh, which mentioned like uh, Narik in the past time. Like uh, sometimes like uh, saintly persons, um, they um, sometimes they need to be very harsh towards um, uh, devotees. Like uh, so here Bharat, um, uh, um, he was very harsh to his mother so that uh, she can awaken the love of God. Ah, perfect. You, I remember thank that. Thank you very much. You, yeah. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, that point was very good. Yeah, that's excellent. In order to benefit them, one has, just like a doctor, may have to cause pain to his patient in order to cure him. St. Prahlad had a disagree, disregard Harani Kashi Pubart had a disown Kaikeyi for their benefit. Here's one. Bart wanted to stay in the forest, which was easier, but he returned and ruled the kingdom. What is the point here? Guru Maharaj, uh, does it mean does it mean that we should do what is pleasing to the Lord than uh, our own uh, wishes? Exactly. You got it. You got it. He he wanted to please Lord Ram, so he it was easier for him to stay in the forest. It was easier for him not to take the kingdom, but to please Lord Ram, he did it. Good. That's that's the essence of the uh, that's the answer itself. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, here's another one. Bharat was ruling the kingdom on Ram's behalf by putting his sandals, his padukas, on the throne. What does this indicate in relationship to our own understanding of our relationship with the material energy. That we can, uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, I guess we can fight with the material own energy only when we are in the shelter of uh, Lord's Lotus feet, uh, then only we can fight with, or maybe I think Bharat could run the kingdom only when, you know, Ram's lotus feet or Padukas were on the throne. That's a nice point, but it's not the point that I'm looking for. <laughs> okay, sorry, Maharaj. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else out there or someone who hasn't said something yet? <laughs> Dandavat Pranam Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances. Um, um, 
Hare Krishna. Guru, Guru Maharaj, I think, uh, mm, and work on behalf of the Lord. Ah, yeah. We are, we're simply representatives of the Lord's activities. So we are, what we call the word, we are caretakers of the material energies, energy, and we're not the proprietor of the retainer energy. We are not the owner of the material energy, but we take care of the material energy. We can use the material energy, but it doesn't belong to us. So Ram ruled the kingdom on behalf of, I mean, Bart ruled the kingdom on behalf of Ram, knowing he was the real proprietor. That's our understanding that nothing that we have belongs to us. We're just taking care of it. That's all. Here's one that might be a little tough. When Lakshman cut off Suparnika's nose, gone was the charming form that she exhibited. Gone was the facade that her real ugly form manifested. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. I think in this one, when, uh, you know, when we have the uh, knowledge of, uh, when we have the transcendental knowledge and uh, we know the truth about Krishna, then we can, by the, you know, by the knowledge, we can cut the Maya's uh, nose as Lakshman did for Shupankha. And then it could, you can see the horrible form of Maya. And uh, until, unless you don't have that knowledge, you feel it's beautiful. It's nice. Everything around us is very nice. Maybe something well, that's like really that. really good. That's a really, it's a really uh, excellent explanation of this, but it's not the one I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, good man. But, but you really, no, no, you're, no, you're, at, you're actually bringing out more of the same point. This is really good. You're giving us an extra additive to we can learn from that, which is really a nice explanation. Yeah, but what is it about Suparnika that was, we can learn what she had gone through? What can we learn from that? Uh, Guru Maharaj, from this we can uh, see ourselves, how we react to situations when we are hurt or offended or insulted or in some way, you know, we experience some negative energy. What is really inside us comes out. Ah, really good. One's great greatness comes out when you're tested by you, your abilities. Wonderful, wonderful. That, that was really good because that's a hard one. When you're tested, then you what comes, what is inside will come out. <laughs> so reversals come and we are tested for who we actually are. But then, if we're actually great, then we can tolerate the situation. If we're not great, then the, the ugly truth of our existence is, is revealed. <laughs> Okay, another one. Ravana wanted to kidnap Sita Devi by deception, but instead he got Maya Sita. Greed and lust are never satiated. They lead to arrogance and envy. So what can we learn from that one? Of course, there may be a few things, but let's see. What can we learn? So take it, use Ravana's uh, message that he got. What can we learn from that? Uh, 
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. I'm sorry, no one unmuted. So I'm just saying what I thought of it. Uh, I'm just thinking, uh, maybe I think that uh, how we think as in uh, he was trying to take Sita without having Ram. So, uh, you know, and uh, what he got because he was trying, he was trying hard to achieve her without Ram. He got Maya, but if he would have wanted Ram, then uh, it would have been, you know, he would have achieved like having a love of the lordships, Ram and Sita both. So good, I just, good. That's you. yeah, you got it. Bhakti, bhakti has to be done accordingly. It cannot be done in a deceptive way. He tried to gain through deception, but if he actually wanted to benefit, he would have accepted Ram and Sita, the goddess of fortune, comes all the way along. Yeah. yeah. So bhakti cannot be achieved other than how bhakti works. Bhakti, we can't make our own program for getting bhakti. Okay, Maricha takes on the form of a golden deer. Sita Devi develops attachment to heaven unless she is trapped. We should see the substance through the eye of scripture. Maricha was about false promises. For, for example, a, spider, a spider's web is most attractive to the fly, but it's actually a trap. So I pretty much revealed the answer, but let's see if you picked up on it when I said it. Hare Krishna devotees, I would encourage everyone to unmute or maybe ask, answer, comment, realize, anything. Please participate. Thank you. Uh, from this, we can learn that Maya's uh, temptations are very alluring. She presents so many things that can entice us and entrap us, but actually it's all an illusion and ultimately it will just lead to our downfall or destruction if we follow that route. Exactly. Maya creates traps and then we go down and we have to suffer. Yeah. We were allured by the glitter of Maya. And then we not able to see that it's actually a trap to pull us away from Krishna. And then we suffer the loss of bhakti or we suffer the reactions of our attachments. Maya can take us away from the, from the association and instructions of great souls. Ravana used Sita Devi's attitude for serving great souls as a means to disobey Lakshman. That was the same pastime, Mahawan. So what can we learn from this? I think Guru, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Ravana, Ravana represents Maya and Sita is being attacked by Maya. What does it indicate? You have to remember the past time too. What was it about Sita that led to her being captured? 
Her soft heartedness, her compassion, her gentle and kind and loving and considerate nature made her want to help somebody, even though she was told not to step outside that line as her protection. Mm -hmm. you, you got the essence. Well, what, what is it about Maya <clears throat> that indicates What is it about Maya that we can learn from this? Yeah. Because she knows all our weak spots. She knows exactly where to catch us because she knows. Ah, I, thank you. You got it. She knows your weaknesses. And if your weaknesses may also look like something that is nice, Sita's attachment or sentiment towards sadhus became the force that caused her to be captured. But it was due to the disobedience of Lakshman. So Sita could have thought, oh, yes, this is really, but actually Lakshman told me never to leave here. So although I feel like helping this person, I know it's, it's not good. But she didn't think like that. She went along with her weak spot and disobeyed Lakshman. Thank you. Sri Devi, thank you. You got that one, right? Chitayu lost his life fighting for Ram. But he achieved the goal of life to please the Lord. So what can we learn from this particular pastime? particularly on this pastime. What is it about Jatayu that is glorious in this sense? What is that quality? There's two words that kind of indicate Jatayu's characteristic in this particular way he, he, re, he responded. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, is it service attitude towards uh, his, uh, Jatayu's service attitude towards Sri Ram? Lord yeah, Ram? but what, yeah, what, what is it about that service attitude? Okay. But what, it was, the, what, what, what motivated Jatayu to ta attack uh, Ravana, aside from the service attitude? What was that motivation within Jatayu that caused him to react like that. So he saw uh, Sita De uh, Raman was uh, taking Sita Devi away from uh, uh, and captured Sita Devi. So he he thought that that was his duty to fight because um, Sita Devi was like uh, his daughter. He was uh, taking Sita Devi as his daughter, and to protect Sita Devi was his duty towards Lord Ram? Yeah, you got it. But then there's a certain characteristics that motivated Chitayu. But you, you kind of said it in, a, in, a, in an explanation, but what is that characteristic that kind of... Um, protecting... I'll, I'll give you another hint. It's mm -hmm. better to lose and win than to win and lose. It's better to lose and win rather than to, it's better to lose and win than to win and lose. Yeah. So what was so that? Jedi did not care for his, yes. Uh, One uh, word. Jedi, yes. He did not even care for his uh, own life. His life to drama. Yeah, but okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Selflessness, but what it, what it, yeah. So give me one word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bravery, Guru Maharaj. Bravery, that's close. <laughs> Fearlessness. Good, but not there. Yeah. Bravery is close, but it doesn't give you the complete thing that. 
his activities were bravery, but what was it about him that motivated his bravery? Sacrifice, Maharaj. That was also there. His righteous, uh, righteous indignation at what was happening to Mother Sita. Oh, you got it now. Mm -hmm. He saw that this was not right. Mm -hmm. And therefore he stood for righteousness beyond the fact that it was Sita, Ram, service. He was righteous. This was an unrighteous situation and he was trying to write act in a righteous way. Yeah. And that's a, that's a quality of a Vaishnava is to always stand for righteousness, even at the cost of one's personal interest. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Yeah. You all got it, and, but you said it in different ways. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to ask you for three words which indicate three characteristics of a devotee. Okay, Sabari, the tribal lady, the uh, disciple of Matanga Rishi. Her guru told her to wait for Ram while him and all the other disciples went back to Godhead. She showed her enthusiasm by working hard every day to clean the place, plucking flowers for the Lord. She only wanted to please the Lord. She was willing to wait. Give us, give us three characteristics that she exhibited in this service. Her spiritual master asked her to do. Faith, devotion. Guru mm, Maharaj? Well, that's the goal. But what, what was the motivating force that brought her to that? Yeah, what is it about her? Determination. Determination, yes. She had to wait a long time. <laughs> she was determined. What else? Surrender. Yeah, but another word. Patience. Patience. She was she was determined. She did everything necessary. She was impatient. And what's the other one that goes with the two these two? Faith, Maharaj. You can be you can be you can be determined and you can be patient, but if you don't have this first one, you can't be the, either the other two. Faith, huh? Enthusiasm, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, she was enthusiastic. She saw it as a great opportunity to serve the Lord. And although she had no idea how long to wait and what to expect, she did it with such enthusiasm and determination and patience, which are the foundations for executing bhakti. Because without these qualities, bhakti will not manifest. <laughs> Even if you have faith, if you're, not, if you're not patient and determined and you not act in an enthusiastic way, your faith will dry up. <laughs> hmm. Okay. This one is this one's a little hard. I don't know. Hanumanji disguised himself when he went to meet Lord Ram. What? was, mm, I can't really say much more without giving away the answer. <laughs> How would you describe that situation in relationship to Hanuman and Ram? 
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, that uh, Hanuman uh, came to Lord Ramachandra as a beggar. Yeah, yeah, but how did, how did the Lord react? You apply it to yourself. We depend on the mercy of the Lord. Yeah, well, that's nice. But there's something else. Talk, think about the incident. Hanuman disguised himself when he meet to when he went to meet Lord Ram. Um, in any new situation, Guru Maharaj, we are shown that we must apply our intelligence and we must uh, use caution so that we are assessing the situation correctly and uh, don't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's nice. It can be applied in that, but there's another point that I'm looking for. That we are, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, that we are always a beggar in front of the Lord, like we are always in uh, taking the mercy of him. What was, what was wrong with what Hanuman did? Okay. That's maybe I can say it that way. He hided oh, no. himself his original form. Sorry, okay. Mataji, gone. Yeah, he was so. trying to test the Lord. Sincerity. He wasn't what one one word he wasn't he wasn't what honest yes thank you yeah he presented himself as something else so before the Lord who we are not we should not try to present ourselves in a way that we are trying to deceive the Lord or even deceive ourselves, We have to, when we come before the Lord, there's nothing to hide. Everything has to be open. Yeah. We can't put on a, a facade before the Lord. Dandavar Pranam Guru Maharaj. Uh, this is Manisha. I just wanted to say that immediately when you asked this question, it reminded me of uh, when the um, Krishna uh, stole the gopis um, dresses and then he wanted the gopis to come to him and get that. So he said, just come in your pure form. Like uh, even in the 18th chapter of the Gita, the Lord says that just leave everything oh. else and just come to me in your pure form. Like it made me that's think nice. of, of that. Like <laughs> that, you know, when we that's... go to the Lord, like don't think that, oh, you are like, you know, so highly educated or you are famous or your status. Just be yourself and be honest and go to the Lord with like, you know. Yeah, that's that's the, that's the perfect example, yeah. Yeah, like the, the, the gopis is the perfect. Yeah, like submit yeah, to the, the Lord hum hum in humbleness. Yeah, exactly, thank you. That's the perfect example. Yeah, there's nothing to hide. <laughs> Okay. What can we learn from Hanuman's jumping across the ocean? We talked about that yesterday a lot, and we also talked about that in a few other times. What can we learn from the Golden Mountain? What can we learn from Simica? What can we learn from Sarasa, the serpent? Mainika was Mainika presented, presented himself as a golden mountain. Simika caught his shadow. Sarasya presented herself as a serpent. What can we learn? What can we learn from Hanuman 
from how he uh, dealt with each one of these situations. Uh, his uh, leaping across the ocean. There's many, there's many. Yeah, there's many answers to this one. <laughs> Manjali, Manjali Mataji, you have your hands up. You can speak up. Hare Krishna, Manjali Mataji. Hare Krishna, sorry, it was an error. Sorry. Yes, yeah, Shilpa Mataji, you have your hands up as well. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Manjula, so Hanuman, you, this one. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. To learn in this one. <laughs> Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, can you hear me? Yeah, well, let's see. Let's go through each one. What can we learn? From the appearance of Mindaka and the Golden Mountain and how, what can we learn about that part of the jump? that in our devotional service we may come across uh, material benefits but they should not distract us from our mission of service to the lord we should exactly that's it you, yeah you got it perfect that was an obstacle there are obstacles that are pleasant and there are obstacles that are unpleasant <laughs> What can we learn from Simica, who was chasing, catching his shadow? Because we explained what it, the shadow of a person means something. But you remember when I explained how a shadow is defined in relationship to the person. What can we learn from that one? Uh, you fault finding when someone is finding faults that's like catching your shadow okay so what can what can we do we should not give way to that uh, uh, propensity ourselves neither should we be distracted when people are blaspheming us or finding fault or criticizing us. We should just carry on with our mission without getting caught up in the drama. We should tolerate it. <laughs> right, we should tolerate it. Yeah, you, you said it, you said it in so many words. Okay, what can we learn from Sarasa? She wanted to stop his, what does Sarasa represent? Someone else besides Sri Devi. <laughs> Shilpa Mataji, you have your hands up. Or Manjali Mataji. What was the what was the attitude of Sarasa? What does she represent? One of one real bad quality.
Even if you don't know it, take a guess. <laughs> She represents envy. She wanted to stop his progress, jealousy of the mind, envious of a person in a better position. She represents envy. Okay, here's, here's one, you have to think about it, but this is a good one. Ravana was thinking his wife Mundo Dari was envious of Sita, but actually he was envious of Ram. Ravana was thinking Vibhishan was disloyal in taking the side of Ram, but he was disloyal to Kuvera, his cousin Brosin, brother. What lessons can we learn from the misunderstanding of, of the way Ravana was thinking towards his wife and towards his brother? Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, it feels like we always find fault in others, but rather than looking at ourselves, that we are full of faults. Good, that's good. What else? What what else was it about Ravana that? was his fault, both in these two, two different cases. Uh, maybe that we project our own faults onto others. Exactly, yeah. The world is a mirror of our own consciousness. We see the faults of others, but actually it's our fault being projected onto others. Hmm. Good, very good. That's the pretty much the essence of the answer. And uh, there's another point that Ravana missed out on, which he could have benefited from. And what was that? Advice from Vibhishana. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't take. He didn't take good advice. He thinks when we think we know, we can't listen to somebody giving us good counsel. Spiritual progress means to be simple and humble. If we are lacking, we won't listen thinking we know better. We know better, therefore that was the Ravana move. I know better. The fault's with them, the fault's not with me. The Ravana consciousness. <laughs> Here's one. This one is very analogous. The big rocks and the small rocks all floated by ra writing Ram's name on it. And therefore, they built a bridge across the ocean. What can we learn from that? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, so Manisha Mataji has written something in this context, what uh, your, your question is. And uh, if you don't mind, is it okay if I read that? Please. Uh, so she's saying, sorry, I have poor, poor connection today for some reason, so I will type. But I wanted to add one line from Hanuman Chalisa that I try to remind myself of often. Prabhu Mudrika Meli Mahu Muk mahi chalidhi langai achraj nahi. Something, uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, this is from Hanuman Chalisa. So literally translates to, he had the Lord's ring, which had Ram engraved on it in his mouth. And so he was able to cross over the water. There is nothing surprising about this. But the thing I always like to remember is the point I get from this is that those individuals that keep Ram's name always in their mouths, can easily cross over the ocean of material existence. There is no surprise in this. Exactly, right on, that was perfect. We keep the Lord's holy name with us, Ram's name, Krishna's name. We can cross this ocean, which is impossible to cross, but it becomes easy 
by the mercy of the name of the Lord. Very good. Thank you, Manisha. Ravana saw all his stalwart warriors, Kubakarna, Indradit, and others, didn't die. Still, I mean, he saw them all die. I'm so sorry. He saw all his stalwart warriors dying, even the best, but he didn't give up. This is indicated of a certain uh, principle or what you say, bad quality. What is that bad quality that is exhibited here by Ravana? There's a couple of things you could say in relationship to this. What was that quality that despite of the fact that he was seeing all these big generals of his being killed, he didn't give up. His false pride. His pride. That's it. You got it. His pride. And what, is, what does pride lead to? Illusion that nothing can touch us and like he thought he's most powerful. Is, nothing will happen to him. That's pride. You're describing pride in another way, but what does pride lead to? Envy. Could it be envy? I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I can't is it envy? Pride I, I caught a three or a four. Yeah. Well, envy. pride goes before the fall, but. What is pride? Pride leads to a fall, but what does pride lead to before the fall? Is it envy, Guru Maharaj? It's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita in the second chapter, which describes what happens. Mm -hmm. Illusion. When one becomes. Yeah. We fall into illusion. Go ahead. Pride causes attachment. Attachment leads to a loss of intelligence. Dayato visayam pumsam. Jayato visayam pumsam. Tesu sangat sajayate. Sangat sajayate kama. Kama krota vijayate. Krota bhavati sam moham. Sam moham shriti vri brahma. Vriti vamsa budinasa. Budinasa panashiti. Lashati means falls down. So lust, attachment, anger, pride leads to loss of intelligence. Once intelligence is lost, again, you fall in the material world. What keeps one in, in, in Krishna consciousness is your intelligence. And sometimes devotees would say to Prabhupada, I don't have any intelligence. And Prabhupada said, we'll get some somewhere. So even if we're not so intelligent, we can connect with something that is intelligent and use that intelligence as our intelligence. So the intelligence is available through the words of the guru and through the words of the shastras. Okay. Now let me see if I can give you another one. I mean, what benefit have we derived from this whole ordeal? Lord Ram, he is the super soul in the hearts of everyone, including Ravanam. He could have just killed Ravana simply by 
turning off his heart. That's not hard. He can just stop his heart and Ravana would be dead. But he allowed Sita to go through all of this ordeal. Why? What was the benefit that he wanted to bring out by allowing all this to happen in the way it did? Oh. Prabhupada said he could have produced so many sitas from his body. He, he, was, he, would have, he could have produced millions of sitas. He could have easily simply just thought about Ravana and killed him just by thinking about him. But he didn't do, he did do that, didn't do that. He went through this whole thing. Why? Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, remember like uh, mm -hmm. mentioned, like devotees like to act on his behalf. So Lord wanted the devotees to act on his behalf. Oh, good. Very good. Thank you. That's a very that's a point that's not in my listing here, but still you made a very, very good point because it adds to the whole point. Yes, yeah, so the Lord wanted to include all of his devotees so they could get the credit. And what is it about us that we can gain from? Uh, Guru Maharaj, I remember reading somewhere that Prabhupada said that uh, the Lord wanted to show that one who takes on a wife should be prepared to have to undergo a lot of difficulties and should also protect her no matter what. Okay, but mm, it's a little bit outside of the point here, but that's also I, correct. Guru Maharaj, I was what thinking can, from another point of view. Can you hear me, Guru Maharaj? This is Govardhan. Okay, it's a very simple. It's a very simple answer, but if you think about it, why did the Lord go allow everyone to go through this? What was the ultimate? benefit for all of us. Um, Guru Maharaj, uh, was it that Sita, through all of the trials and tribulations, she remained with unflinching faith to Ram, even in, in the face of Ravana, she remained chaste, and even when being tested, um, she, she would rather give up her body. So, she to teach us to have unflinching faith in the Lord because he will come through for us. He will protect us. I mean, that was one. What is point. that faith, that unflinching faith that we, that unflinching faith that we develop? What is it? What does it lead to? Um, uh, pure love of God. Um, it ah, leads to you got it now. You got it. Thank you. This whole thing was to, the whole thing was to awaken our love for him. No. The whole thing was, he made it, made everybody go through all this so he could perform his pastime and everyone could develop love for him. If he just produced a whole bunch of sitas and turned off Ravana's heart and made everything just by his God powers, would be no, there would be no story and no attraction. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. It's about reviving our dormant love. Altar of Ram. The monkeys were against him, except Hanuman. Vibhishan was willing to be misunderstood or even chastised to surrender to the Lord. What quality did he exhibit? The monkeys were against him. He was willing to be misunderstood. They even wanted to attack him when he first came, but still he came to the shelter of the Lord. What was that quality that motivated him to take the Lord's shelter? 
Now that quality is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, virtue and righteousness. He wanted exactly. To yeah, you got it. Righteousness. That this is the right way to stay with my family, to support my brother. Although he had love for his brother, his brother was wrong. So he acted out, out of virtue and out of righteousness. Good. Thank you. These questions don't have really long answers. They only have a few word answers. If you think about it, you'll come to more of a suture type answer. And that's basically what we're looking for. In the battle of illusion, when we are fighting illusion, what do we need in order to become victorious? And what did Ram exhibit in this particular situation in relationship to Vibhishan? Okay, put yourself, you're in illusion. You're faced with a difficult situation. Ram was faced with a difficult situation and Vibhishan was there. So using that pastime of Ram, putting yourself in the situation, what is the solution or antidote against illusion? Uh, surrender to the Lord, Guru Maharaj? No, Ram is the Lord. No, he's, he's in illusion also. Trust faith. Faith is there. Faith is the all-encompassing statement, but break it down. Take shelter of the spiritual master. Okay, when we do that, what happens? Um, we we um, become well. This we become it. We come out of illusion. We are but brought how, to. How do we come out of the illusion? Um, the understanding that um, that the. the now, use, the example, use the example of Ram and Vibhishan. Same thing. Does Ram, does Ram need to go to Vibhishan to get out of illusion? No. He doesn't. Okay. But on the... But what, we, but what, what was he teaching? Show us what? To, to show us how to surrender um, to, to the spiritual master. And how how is that surrender come? If, I'm not sure. <laughs> I can answer that. Knowledge Easy. or intelligence? Yeah, we get knowledge, we get advice, we get counsel from the spiritual master, and takes you out of the illusion. Following Ram didn't need to do that. He went to Vibhishan to get counsel and advice. In the battle of against illusion, we need advice and counsel. We can't battle illusion alone. Laram wanted to show, don't think you can fight against illusion. Get, get advice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Augusta Muni had given a divine arrow to Lord Ram. That arrow was used by Lord Ram to kill Ravana by piercing his heart. What can we learn from this particular pastime?
Put yourself in a position of Ram. What can you learn from this pastime? That any advice or uh, anything given uh, uh, by the uh, by the spiritual master or great sense or previous acharyas can be used to cut the you know knots of Maya or maybe come out of the material existence, something like that, Guru Maharaj, maybe. You got it. Yeah. By the grace of the spiritual master, the Lord was able to get the knowledge he needed playing the part of an ordinary in order to kill the demon. The demons could be also analogous to the material desires within the heart. Yeah, good. Thank you. Manisha okay. Mataji has, uh, Guru Maharaj, sorry, Manisha Mataji has said, Guru gives the weapon to fight against Maya. Yeah. yeah, that arrow was the divine arrow that he, the, the Guru gives you the weapon by which you can fight Maya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the last one. This is number 25, the last question. What, uh, I won't go into a long explanation, the appearance or the reappearance of Lord, Lord Ram back in Ayodhya is known as what festival and what does it signify? Every Indian should know this one. <laughs> it's known as Dasara, and it uh, signifies the triumph of good over evil. No, it's not. The Lord's back coming back to Ayodhya. It's not. It's Diwali. It's oh, Diwali. Diwali. Right. Festival of light. It's a festival of light. I guess so. I think so. I don't know. Yeah, it's the festival of light called Diwali. And what does it indicate? Oh. That when you invite the Lord back into your heart, then all ignorance is destroyed and you get the enlightenment of, illu of illumination. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. These festivals of light means to light the light of our heart and welcome the Lord back into our heart. That light is our devotion to Ram, to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Jai Sri Ram. Thank you. You got that one. Okay. Thank you very much. A little quiz. Everybody try to remember these different points because these are very, very powerful messages that we can learn from the Ramayana. We learn more from messages than we learn from anything else. This is the way we think. Uh, if we can remember at least one or two of these messages and adopt some of these principles, then we'll make nice progress towards developing the qualities that are conducive to pure bhakti. Okay, so this is the last day and uh, we'll move on to another subject starting tomorrow which will be, tomorrow is a festival. It's the appearance of Shamananda Prabhu, Vamsi Vadar, Vamsi Vadam. And it's also Sri Balaram Rasayatra. So we'll base our class around these topics. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Manisha Mataji, you have your hands up. Do you have anything? Do you want to say something? Yes. Guru Maharaj, I wanted to say thank you so much. I enjoyed this type of class very much. And I please request with folded hands, please have these kinds of uh, classes sometimes again in the future. I learned so much from everyone's input and your explanations. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, thank you. We will definitely fulfill your desire. <laughs> thank you. Okay, Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada.
Let's see. All glories to the Vaishnavas. Pancha Kalpa Thiru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Pei Pacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Yo Namaho Gaur Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Jai 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 All glory to the Prabhupada, all glory to Gurudev Ki Jai Jai Guru Maharaj Ki Thank you Guru Maharaj Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.